JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for February the 5th. I am Harold Lambos Pissuros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFD and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded higher against all but one of the other G10 currencies on Thursday during the Asian session Friday. It gained the most versus SEC, NZD, the Euro and the Swiss franc in that order, while it, it gained the least ground versus the Canadian dollar. The green back under performed only against, against uh, the British pound. Now, the weakening of the safe haven franc combined with the relative strength of the Canadian dollar suggests that the markets traded in a risk on fashion yesterday and today in Asia. However, the weakening of the risk linked Kiwi points otherwise. Thus, in order to get a clearer picture with regards to the broader market sentiment, we prefer to turn our gaze to the equity world. Here, may uh, all but one of the EU and US indices traded in the green with the S&P 500 and Nasdaq hitting fresh record highs. The only exception was the UK's FTSE 100, which slid 0.06%, per perhaps due to a strengthening pound. The, pos the positive investor morale rolled over into the Asian session today, with Japan's Nikkei 225 and China Shanghai Composite gaining 1.54 and 0.42% respectively. Hopes that Congress Democrats in the US could pass Joe Biden's $1.9 trillion spending package without Republican support, as well as another batch of uh, upbeat uh, earnings reports may have been the drivers behind the further improvement in the overall investor morale. The fact that uh, the number of Americans uh, filing new applications for unemployment benefits decreased further last week may have also helped. All this adds further credence to our view that the risk appetite is likely to stay supported for a while more. However, the inverse, relation, the inverse uh, excuse me, correlation between equities and the US dollar seems to have been fading with the greenback set for its uh, best week in three months. The US currency may have lost its safe haven status as US data are now suggesting that the US economy is performing better than many may have expected. With the pace of vaccinations being faster than other uh, economies, the dollar may continue to outperform most of its G10 peers uh, for a while more. The big question though is whether its latest recovery is just a corrective phase of its prevailing downtrend or whether this is indeed a trend reversal. We believe that uh, it is too early to answer that question and that only time will tell. Now, staying in the FX world, uh, the British pound was the main gainer among uh, the G10s, coming under strong buying interest after the Bank of England kept its policy unchanged and pushed back the idea of negative interest rates. The central bank said that the British banks will need at least six months to prepare for a shift into negative uh, interest rates, but that doesn't mean that the central bank is intended to set a negative rate at some point in the future. It was just concluded that it would be appropriate to start preparations in order to provide uh, the capability uh, to do so if necessary. As uh, for, our view, for our view, with the Brexit saga taking the back seat and the probability of negative interest rates falling further, we see the case for the pound to continue performing well, especially with the UK, go, go, with the UK going further ahead in the COVID vaccination rates. Given that we believe um, that uh, market appetite is likely to stay supported, the pound may perform better against the safe havens yen and franc. 
As uh, for today, the main event on the economic agenda may be the U.S. employment report for January. Non-farm payrolls are expected to have rebounded 50,000 after falling 140,000 in December, while the unemployment rate is forecast to have held steady at 6.7%. Average hourly earnings are anticipated to have slowed to 0.3% month over month from 0.8%, but barring any major deviations to the prior monthly prints, this will leave the year-over-year -year rate unchanged at 5.1%. Last week, the Fed decided to keep its monetary policy settings unchanged, with the only material change in the statement being the part saying that the pace of the recovery in economic activity and employment has moderated in recent months. At the press conference following the decision, uh, Powell stated that it's, um, it's too early to focus on uh, tapering dates, adding that monetary policy should stay highly accommodative. Although an, improve, although an improvement from uh, December, uh, this employment report is unlikely to take off the table the likelihood of the Fed acting again if uh, necessary. In any case, an, imp an, an improved uh, report may allow US equities and the greenback to continue gaining for a while more. At the same time with the US employment report, we get jobs data for January from Canada as well. The unemployment rate is forecast to have risen to 8.9% from 8.6%, while the net change in employment is expected to show that the economy has lost 55,000 jobs after losing 62.6 thousand in December. At its prior meeting, the Bank of Canada decided to keep interest rates and the pace of its QE purchases unchanged, disappointing those expecting a small cut or even a re-increase in uh, quantitative easing. Officials also noted that as the governing council gains confidence in the strength of the recovery, the pace of uh, net purchases of uh, government of Canada bonds will be adjusted as required, which suggests that the next policy step of, uh, of, uh, for the Bank of Canada may be tapering its uh, QE purchases. However, another soft deployment report is unlikely to suggest that such a move may be on the cards in the months to come. It could even push back expectations on that front, something that may prove negative for the Canadian dollar. Now, as for the rest of today's events, apart from the US and Canadian employment reports, we also get the US and Canadian trade balances for December, as well as Canada's IV PMI for January. Both deficits are expected to have narrowed somewhat, while no forecast is available for the IV PMI. We also have three speakers on the schedule, and those are Bank of England Governor Andrew Bailey, ECB Vice President Luis de Quintos, and ECB Chair of the Supervisory Board, Andrea Enria. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 8 o'clock a.m. GMT. You can find the link in the description below. At this point, I have to let you know that there will be no weekly Market Outlook webinar on Monday, neither a daily market review for the rest of uh, next week. So goodbye, have a great day and greater weekend and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again on Monday the 15th. JFT, just fair and direct.